do that, I would just like to take one minute, one minute for all of us, all of us Ambazonians, wherever you're watching or tuning in from, I'd like us to take one minute to one minute of silence to honor our brothers, <clears throat> our sisters, our parents who were slaughtered in Bali. Can we all do that? Can we all take one minute or a second to observe that minute for those heroes sacrifice for the freedom of Ambazonia in Bali. Let's do that, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for doing so. I have no, uh, I have no reason to keep you any longer waiting for this presentation. I will now bring you the presentation. Good evening, good evening, fellow Ambazonians. Events in Bali, events in Bali. I mean the massacres in Bali, Wednesday through Friday are no longer new to any one of us. We know all, we all know now what happened, how it happened and why it happened. Of course, who did it, who carried out the massacres has never been a question. Through it, through all the duration of this war, we have seen some very desperately heinous acts of maiming perpetrated by French Cameroon soldiers on our people. The Pinin massacre stands out as a good example. But what took place in Bali and how it happened? We have not yet seen since the war was declared against us. One thing is certain, though. Paul Beer has begun to redeem his election promise of wiping out our people. How bad? In the most undignified way, or else. How do you explain that dead and lifeless bodies are lying up and roasted before burning them in a mass grave. Let me inform you that contrary to allegations that most of the people killed were members of Ambazonia Restoration Forces, the interim government has upon its own findings been able to establish that the bulk of the charred people seen in that charcoal heap of lifeless bodies were civilians innocent civilians picked up and minding their own business they were then locked up gas with deadly chemicals and then left to die slowly some others were caught and literally strangled to death like the way you strangle a live chicken by the french cameroon soldiers the case of this young man whose name I cannot put out here, who had walked out of the house in the serenity of the night to walk away after hearing movements outside suspected to be movements of trigger happy killing squad was picked up. Some of the soldiers had sway to his feet and two other soldiers holding him by the neck strangled him to immediate death according to an eyewitness who later died at the hospital 
after they strangled him to death, deadly bomb was then for a deadly bomb was then fall down his throat as entrapment to others who would later show up to retrieve his lifeless body. Surely, as the unsuspecting family showed up to retrieve the corpses or to retrieve the corpse, the deadly explosive planted in the belly of the dead guy detonated, cut his belly into two parts before claiming another victim right at the scene. Two others who did not immediately die inhaled so much of the poison even when they succeeded to arrive at a treatment facility and where ex and an x-ray was conducted on them the long time taken to get to the hospital had left them good as nothing as the inhaled chemical had very badly infested their systems they too died in a matter of moments why nurses at the hospital attended to them but thank God they were able to tell this narration before giving up the ghost. At least we know, we know, we know what happened at the hospital where some of the victims were transported to. It was a very emotional scene as the victim recounted the ordeal to family members. One of them, whose names again I won't review for family security reasons who was the main source of this narration and who had in the company of the other three arrived the scene of the murders to pick up the remains of the one the bomb had been planted in the belly talking to his siblings, to his siblings few minutes before he died wept and his last words his last words were, or which he altered were, and I quote, God is on our side, end of quote. He was saying to us, you cannot give up, you cannot surrender. Fellow Ambazonians, make no mistake, the Cameroon army planned the Bali massacres and made sure it was surgically executed to the later. They knew that for the operation to go on successfully, communication in the community must be shut down. So, three days, three days before they carried out the assassinations, electricity from all of Bali, in all of Bali, was shut down. Before the phones, the phone network was also shut down in Bali. With this under their control, some elites of Bali, both in La Republic du Cameroon, in Ambazonia, and in the diaspora, who were collaborating with the soldiers, leaked out word that the slaughter was ready, the venue was ready, the people were ready, they said. And so they conspired and betrayed innocent civilians thinking that all the victims will turn out to be members of the Restoration Forces. Yes, Bali elites, both home and in the diaspora, have a hand in the burning of their own people. And on behalf of this interim government, I must assure them they shall not escape the wrath of remaining Bali people and that of this interim government. They shall be hunted like how you hunt down ground beef. They and their families shall have no holes to hide in. We are sending a message to them that their own lives are not any more important than the lives of innocent people they betrayed and sent to their early graves in a very inhumane manner. This is war. And when you act cowardly, expect your pay. The original plot was to target the restoration forces. 
but most of them had left the vicinity of the incident before it happened except for the innocent people in the big compound the people were made to gather in the compound in a certain room then information was dispatched to the soldiers who had already taken cover in the immediate vicinity information was passed to them that the room was ready the people were ready for the slaughter few of them not as many as the soldiers thought then once they were alerted the soldiers sneaked in gassed the room locked it down and they began to succumb to a slow a slow death one after the other as people began to show up in the vicinity unsuspectingly the soldiers ambushed them and strangled them rather silently to death you can tell from the first photograph that came out from that from that from that location that there is hardly any traces of blood on the bodies of the victims and equally there are barely any wound any bullet marks or wounds on their bodies that is to confirm the narrative that they were all gas some strangled before burned to cover up evidence of the method of the deed however whether they succeeded or not to cover the evidence remains entirely on what the media the international media human rights organizations and the international community would care enough to carry out a thorough investigation for all intents and purposes that is what happened in Bali now let me quickly add here that no one no one should be deceived by the presence of a pile of dendon seen in those pictures first of all the photos were taken and circulated by the very soldiers who carried out the massacres those soldiers have the pedigree of killing innocent people and then planting guns on them so to portray them as terrorists the definition that best fits French Cameroon propaganda let me pose this question to anyone who would care to hear tell me how does a dying person or a dead person lying flat on his back with hands scattered in multiple directions have a gun have a gun lying on his chest when he is dead and gone how is that possible isn't it only a person who is alive who would do that that is exactly what the French Cameroon soldiers have become known for that is how they are killing innocent civilians and then planting guns on them so as to qualify everybody everybody boys and girls men and women as terrorists just to serve to the world how every Ambazonian is a terrorist now in the past French Cameroon officials have always, always wanted to level us all as terrorists. They are implementing every trick in the book to accomplish that agenda, that label. Unfortunately, the world's media, the BBC's of the world, the CNN's of the world, France 24 and Al Jazeera's of the world are aiding and abetting the skin of La Republic of Cameroon. They won't cover the story as it is. They won't say anything. The United Nations, the EU, the AU, among others, won't say a thing either. We recall that only about three weeks ago, a group of secondary school students were abducted in Nkwen, Bamenda. The BBC and all these other media houses we're all about the story. They took the narrative from the French Cameroon government and ran with it. 
But here we have even a worse situation. A situation where 37 human beings are trapped, killed, and burned like logs of wood. Where is the BBC? Where is CNN, Al Jazeera, France 24, Reuters, and the Associated Press? Where are they covering the story? Had it been it were so-called terrorists who killed that are completely Cameroon soldiers, wouldn't this story have been all over the international media making the headlines? It's a shame that the so-called United Nations with a permanent representative on the ground will sit and watch this genocide perpetrated on with impunity on innocent people and say nothing, absolutely nothing. Fellow Ambazonians, we must from today, from today, take some very, very drastic measures aimed at protecting our own interests and our own people. Nobody will do it if we don't. We have learned that the United Nations is in the territory distributing so-called humanitarian support. This is the moment, this is the time that will tell the United Nations mission in our territory that we do not want their food and clothing. Our people in the bushes need homes and security. They want to return to their own homes, at least for those who still have homes. What our people need from the United Nations now it's peace. It's a peace. It's a peacekeeping force. And if the United Nations won't send one, then it is as good as nothing. And they should leave our territory with immediate effect. We are tired of their hypocrisy. They take food to our people to feed them, to feed them fat. So they get them out of the bushes, only to be slaughtered and the United Nations says nothing and does nothing. This is the height of international hypocrisy and conspiracy. This is the moment to confiscate anything and everything United Nations has on the ground in our territory. Every United Nations official or piece of equipment that is seen moving or standing anywhere in Ambazonia must be hurriedly, and I mean hurriedly, confiscated. Just imagine if this crisis was happening anywhere else in the wide world, the United Nations would have done something since the crisis began. Hell no! This is Africa. This is the black continent. Let them kill themselves. Who cares? So the United Nations is saying to what is going on in Cameroon, in Amazonia. Fellow Amazonians, we must start to confiscate everything United Nations in our territory. We can't allow them sitting there conspiring against us and presiding over the annihilation, genocide, the massacres of our families. They should within a week be chased out of Boya and Bamenda and any equipment belonging to them should be taken over. This must be expeditiously done it is not a joke. I prefer to be in the gulags than be a free man standing and see innocent people, my own people, powerless people, go through this abject hypocrisy of the so-called United Nations. Our destiny is in our hands and in the hands of God. Yes, God is on our side, as that dying Ambazonian said. The interim government sends sincere condolences to all the families of the affected in this tragedy. We shall always, always remember the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom of our country. Be strong and comfort yourselves. They will, they will kill for a cause dear in your hearts. Fellow Ambazonians, Let's stand strong and united in the midst of this present height of provocation. We must not forget what French Cameroon 
wants to achieve out of this degree of terrorism. They believe that by slaughtering our people and roasting them like logs of wood in our faces, that fear will engulf us all, that we will get demoralized, that we will be weakened, discouraged, dissolution, and then finally sur surrender. That is the agenda they want to achieve. We cannot give it to them. We must deny them over our dead bodies. We must let them know that fear and surrender isn't anymore in our vocabulary as far as the pro prosecution of this war is concerned. The people massacred and roasted in Bali must not be allowed to sleep for a moment in their tombs thinking that we surrender, that we let them to be sacrificed in vain. These killings, if anything, if anything, must only resurrect in us anger and determination to withstand and to confront La Republique du Cameroon for as long as they refuse to pack their tools and leave our country, our territory, our Ambazonia. Nothing short of this. We must stand. For God is on our side. Thanks for watching. Long live Ambazonia. Short live the struggle. God bless you and good night.